Hey guys, <clears throat> Jim here again. Uh, just real quick, I wanted just to go over for the people that have never had to f send a firearm uh, over in, with an airplane. Um, this is going to be really quick. It's really simple to be honest. There's only two places that I can think of that uh, I know and um, had heard of through either the guys that work with me and stuff like that have had issues with as far as um, sending firearms. Now, air rifles are considered firearms by uh, TSA as far as that goes when it comes to um, shipping them, you know, on an airplane. So, it all falls the same rule. So, you know, don't get all upset over it. It is what it is. So, first thing you want to do is you're going to degas your rifle, that's for sure. Okay. You want to take as, all the air out as much as possible so it gets down to zero as far as that goes. Um, and, uh, that way you don't have any issues when you get to the airport as far as um, having to degas it. There's nothing more embarrassing and cause a lot of static when you have to uh, degas your gun in an airport, and especially in the day and age that we're living in right now where guns are considered to be such a taboo no matter what it is. So um, degas it first as far as that goes. I'd definitely highly recommend it. Um, some places, um, like when I went to Puerto Rico, I didn't degas mine, had no issues whatsoever and so forth. So um, but still, I would definitely highly recommend it. The other thing, thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're... I put my magazine here and uh, that way it's at least, uh, you know, I'd say a good three feet away from the uh, bolt as far as that goes. Um, this is a no-no. I just got finished shooting just now, but I just figured I'd give you a this quick video but uh, you do not want the magazine actually in the uh, <coughs> in the rifle as far as that goes um, you want to have it definitely separate and uh, usually I think the rules is it has to be any any of the uh, uh, ammo has to be at least six inches away from the trigger or from the breech block as far as that goes so mine is totally far enough from that and the other thing is I don't ship my ammo of course in the same box I mean in my same uh, hard container here rifle container um, I send that separately usually I send that by uh, US Postal Office or something like that and let that come by its own um, like I said this is if you need to bring your rifle with you um, if you feel more comfortable bringing it with you than having it shipped I know that, you know this is a four thousand dollar setup here and I know that nothing for nothing when you um, when you get to a job like what we do, um, you're more worried about your rifle getting there and it's functional and you don't have to put all this time into it and so forth. Uh, the other thing too is I leave the silencer uh, on mine as far as that goes. Is um, You could take it off. I've got two. I've got a Hug It right here. Um, thank you Andrew Hug It for um, my silencer. I, I mean I purchased that one. He is one of our sponsors and so forth. but. Um, so I actually keep my custom silencer that I have on here, or LDC, um, on my uh, rifle, um, usually when shipping it, as far as that goes. The other reason is because that's, you know, 8 inches right here, and if I if it kept banging, I want it to move around, and um, in my case, and so forth. So, definitely degas your rifle. Um, you want to definitely get a hard case. Um, this one right here is pretty much a Pelican knockoff basically but it's through Cabela's uh, this is definitely a Cabela's band, brand um, very very inexpensive um, I think I paid they're on sale of course I think I paid 180 for this one as far as that goes I do have a Pelican case um, as far as that goes um, I've been trying to get them to be one of our sponsors but um, so it's not that big that huge huge of a cost but a major major great investment as far as protecting your rifle uh, your camera um, for a matter of fact um, I have my camera of course in my hand but uh, I put my camera in there also um, take the battery out of course and put that next to it but you want to you want a case that actually has a really good locking mechanism um, as far as that goes so this one has a really great locking mechanism um, it's basically put down turn Okay, and of course that, that pinches down on the, the clasp there, and you just put that down just so it's not up in the way and getting hit by anything. And this is actually pressurized. So let me find the pressurized button here. 
Uh, oh, here it is. So really quickly, you can see that this little button right here, actually, when you're in the airplane, of course, it pressurizes everything. So this actually, the case will actually fluctuate depending on the pressure and so forth. This will actually degas it and so forth. Highly recommend it as far as that goes. Some people like the cheaper cases and like I said, you get what you pay for. I'd rather spend, uh, you know, when you got an expensive rifle like that, it's in there. Um, a working rifle, not just a planking rifle, um, or even a competition type rifle. Um, you want to make sure you you're packed up your gear as safe as possible. The other thing I like about these and I'd recommend is the wheels on your case, okay? This is considered a double uh, rifle case. Um, let me unlock that real quick. Okay. So technically, I could put two rifles in here, back to back, as you can see. This one's cut out for my other, it's actually cut out for my day state. So I could put both my rifles in there at one time. So that way I'm not carrying two, have to carry two heavy cases uh, for individual rifles. I can carry both rifles in there with all my gear. Like I said, my camera, my tools I'll need, my Atlas bipod, uh, silencers, um, you know, all the gadgets I'm going to need, cleaning and so forth, um, uh, as far as putting it in here, okay? So, very, very more, I'm mean, very efficient for what I need it for. Uh, the other thing is, is when you bring your case to, to the airport, you want to bring it to the airlines that you're actually going to be flying with. For instance, here's my, here's one of my, um, firearms unloaded ticket. Um, when I was coming from uh, Puerto Rico, or going to Puerto Rico, should I say. Um, as you can see, it basically says, TSA will have you fill this all out. Um, oh, let's back up here. You want to go right to the airline that you're flying with. So this one's American Airlines. Declare your rifle. Um, they'll give you a piece of paper signed with your signature and so forth. Um, and basically, this one says firearms unloaded. You want to make sure, of course, there's no pellets, or if you're carrying a fire, uh, actual powder burner, that there's no, there's no pellet in the breech block, or no bullet in the breech block. Now remember, this, I just got finished zeroing my gun, so I just put it in here. There's no, there, as you can see, the red dot here. There's no, there's no uh, bullets in the magazine whatsoever, or in the breech block. I already checked that. But when you actually are doing, just take your guns down to the airport, you definitely don't want the magazine in the breech block whatsoever. That's a no-no. So, any which way, they'll have you fill out one of these um, firearms unloaded, signature, date, and so forth. And what they'll do is, they'll, from there, is you're releasing your rifle to TSA. TSA will take it over um, and swab it down. And what they do is they're basically looking for explosive residue or anything like that. And you can't touch it from there until it's declared on the other side of uh, your destination as far as that goes okay and uh, it's real simple guys it's 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 nothing complicated I figure if you can fly to Puerto Rico with air rifles and firearms like we did um, when we had a harvesting job to do for iguana down there and you know my guys were you know two of my guys uh, uh, were carrying pistols and you know firearm actual firearms powder burners there is no no issue whatsoever, you know. Treat it if you treat yourself and everybody else like professionals. They're going to do the same to you. Is when you act like an ass and so forth. Is when you get yourself. Well, <laughs> you guys see what goes on in the news. And I'm a black guy, so <laughs> any which way, uh, just keep it simple and right to the point, you know. So um, definitely invest in a good case. Um, you know, one with a really good handle that's real strong. Uh, make sure that you're your, your clips and um, hinges are real strong. They're not aluminum, they're actually stainless steel because after a while, as you know, aluminum will bend. As strong as aluminum is, it doesn't have the, the, the uh, vertical strength as much as, as steel can handle. So it's smarter to have steel or stainless steel pins and so forth. And of course, decorate your, your uh, case with whatever you want and so forth. I've got a little bit of some of my sponsors and of course, you know, I was a Navy dude, so, you know, diving used to be my thing, but right now, I, if I have to touch water, I get a little upset and get, I think I've had enough for water for the rest of my life. Um, so, anyway, that kind of, kind of 
puts that in perspective as far as that goes. Um, you definitely want to ship, if you're shipping this on the airline, you definitely want, want a hard case. It will not let you have any uh, soft case and so forth. Now, the only thing I did not cover is actually, as you can see these holes, there is, on, on this case, there's two holes for um, uh, a clasp type lock. It has to be TSA approved. My locks are technically not TSA approved because I don't like how, well, for instance, um, when I was in Puerto Rico, they were trying to open up my casing. There was a firearm in there with it when there was no firearm in this case with it. And they were, they wanted to literally cut my lock and they, they were going to have a little bit of trouble because my lots are a lot thicker than what TSA would normally approve and so forth. So you got to really watch yourself on that. Of course, I carry TSA locks just in case, but once again, this is, you know, I don't need somebody trying to you see this little crack because it's not closed yet but I don't need anybody sitting there trying to get into my my case and uh, try to take something in it take something out of it or take or put something in it and get myself in trouble so you know but any which way invest in a good case um, Cabela's does a great job of of the cases and the pricing for the cases and so forth you might not need a double um, rifle case you might just need a single case which is actually cheaper um, as far as that goes but for what I need I needed both my 25 and 30 caliber rifles so they both came with you know they both fit in there perfectly fine um, I do um, I do have actually I do have to uh, take off the silencer on one of them because it is a little bit longer um, oh no wait a minute this is no on this case it's actually the, the this is the long case, so I actually will take my my boss, which is a lot longer, um, with the silencer on it and everything. So really look into the case as far as the length that you need to be um, by checking, you know, the length of your rifle with the silencer or without, depending on how you want to, you know, put that. Um, I have it so my my silencer can go right here. I cut out a pocket right here, and uh, actually my wife helped me out on this. She um, you know, there's one's called one inch pluck foam where you, it's one inch squares and you pull it out and you can do whatever. I actually used a um, the same knife we cut the electric, um, the electric uh, turkey cutter knife um, to cut these out and so forth. Um, it's a lot easier, a lot cleaner. As you can see, it doesn't got all these jagged edges um, and really simple. And this, this gun does not, I mean, it literally, when you, especially when you have the other rifle in here, um, it doesn't move very far at all. So it keeps it nice and firm. Um, and most important of all this, and I've seen it, even my buddy has, who does it, and he travels all around, he's a, you know, um, uh, ex-EOD guy, buddy of mine, um, and nothing for nothing, you know, I saw his rifle, uh, his 308 that he would carry, um, in his case, and he actually had his, his, uh, scope that was still mounted onto his 308, it was flipped the other way. Okay, well, you want your scope up where your handle is so you're not putting that kind of stress when you're hitting it down, you know, onto the bottom when you're trying to, you know, put it flat and so forth. Um, just remember, scope to your scope closest to your to your handle. You know, you don't want it the other way around because you could damage your scope or somebody could with the right hit and so forth. You know, so think about that also. Um, so some people I've seen and if their scopes are always opposite or whatever, and if you're still even if you have your, don't have your scope on your rifle, you definitely like here's my other spot for my other scope because um, uh, with my boss the scope will not this, this the gun will not pl uh, fit in here. Uh, correctly so I have to take the scope off and here's my scope as, as you can see it's closer to the handle to the top in other words than it is to the bottom where it could get some major damage or hit you know that's where I worry about the most so you know you're talking uh, Hawk sign winders you know five hundred dollars in the frontier which is almost seven hundred dollars so that's a lot of to get damaged and then get to the your destination and find that you have no optics to work with that can be really a pisser so you know pre plan this all out as far as that goes um, that's pretty much it um, I don't think I missed anything and if I do just hit me up and uh, 